Welcome to the Lesbo and the Bean universe. Lesbo and the Bean. L-A-T-B. Lat B. Where mixed martial arts and the UFC get silly. Big silly. Buckle up and move your tray tables to their upright position. And please, somebody shut that baby up. It's time for Lesbo and the Bean. Starting out in New York, five cards, or five bouts in the main event. It starts out with the ladies, and we're going to have a profile fight with Felice Herring at 115 pounds against Michelle Watterson. Both of these ladies in their 30s. Wait a minute. Okay. UFC 229 main card breakdown. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> That's my bell. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bell. It was a tiny little. It was a wee bell. It was a wee bell. <laughs> so as I was saying, we got Felice Herring, Michelle Watterson, a couple of Profile ladies, WME getting all behind Watterson. She's at Wink's camp, been training with Holly Holm, been posting all sorts of Instagram videos. We've seen Felice Herring showing off them abs nonstop all week long. You know they're both on weight. With this fight, a big factor for me is really the size. I feel like Watterson's always been one of those girls that could be a 105er. You always talk about Adam Waits. Watterson's one of those ladies that doesn't have to cut weight at all she gives up a little bit of size in there she does well with a lot of her kicks and movement especially she has more booty than you think yeah for a little lady for a little lady for you're sure right she could She's be nazi. a little she could go down a little bit totally 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 i didn't mean to judge her body but i, I was like could she lose 10 pounds maybe maybe she could I could, and not in a bad way. She doesn't, but no, no, no. she I doesn't mean, look like she cuts like Felice Herring. Look at not, Felice Herring. You guys, <laughs> that sounded weird for a second. Yeah, I only mean for getting and fighting. So. She does not need to lose any weight. She has an amazing body. <laughs> uh, Felice Herring is one of those fighters that's like at 125, 130 and cuts down where I feel like Watterson is about 115, 117, 118, and cuts three pounds of just Felice missed Herring is cut up like Claudia Gadelia cut up. Even more so, because she's a fitness model now. She's next level cut up. She, she's next level, level of athletic, but Michelle Watterson keeps a good pace in there as well. Better striking accuracy goes to Watterson slightly. Felice Herring, though, um, has standard Muay Thai. Her movements looked great out of that Oyama camp. She's really come into her own. At 34, this is one of those fights that I've been holding off on talking about because I feel like the lines have been getting closer and that benefits Felice Herring more because once it gets to the ground, even if Watterson, who has more takedowns and had more takedowns, it's been against lesser competition where I feel like Felice Herring has been taken down more in her career, but it's been against better competition. So on the ground, I also feel like Herring can reverse this when she needs to. And when she gets on top, I don't think Watterson gets her off her. I want the line to close up more. I know Water or Felice Herring is a slight favorite. And I think this should be about minus 115. Coin flip of a fight when it comes to. But I feel like this is a decision all day. I've had Herring all week. I have never changed my mind. This is one of those steadfast plays. I feel like I'm going to play her heavy on my DK. Where do you think this goes? This is a big, huge flip-flop fight for me, and I've had Herring since day one of this fight, and now I have Michelle Watterson. When I rewatch their fights, there's just something about what's come together in the Jackson Wing camp. You're going to hear me like a tape recorder of such a flip-flopper for Jackson Wink, but they've done something with their camp since that Holly Holm fight against Megan Anderson where everything's changed for them. And I think it's their champion, their lion is in talks to come back. And I think when a guy headlines a camp so hard and gets knocked off his pedestal, it's hard for the whole camp. And I think having that guy back on his pedestal is good for everyone involved. It probably has him in the gym more. It probably, he seems like a good teammate. Fun, I watch videos of all of them. Mike Perry seems like a good new big energy in the room. I see videos of them together. Um, Michelle Watterson, one of those people as well. She just seems like she has a really great energy and a good team around her. Her Courtney Casey fight was sketchy, but that was the best we've seen Courtney Casey look. Her going to decision with Tisha Torres was an okay win for me, even though she 
just went to decision. Tisha is one of the harshest girls in the division, in my opinion, and she has heavy hands. So Michelle Watterson can take a punch. She got submitted by the champion. Look what we've seen Rose do since then. So uh, going to decision with Carolina, go KK isn't bad either, or is it? Now Kiki's eleven and two, and she's only lost via destruction, <laughs> via comment from the freaking. I know. Atmosphere. You know what? I have Not to say something around. about KK about JJ. They were point fighting in a division that once the the formula was figured out for that, it's has not been great for either woman since. Would you say Felice Herring is more of the point fighter or and the karate hottie? I don't want to take hottie? anything away, anything from KK. KK is friggin' rad. Yeah, Jessica I totally agree. is just that much next level. Yeah, I, but, that's the way I um, feel. <laughs> gosh, I've just gone back Who, and forth. Who's and more forth. of a point fighter, Watterson or Herring? I think it's Watterson, and I think that that's where Herring is a better MMA fighter. But Watterson is okay off of her back. She's got a couple arm bars off of her back as well. She throws it up quickly. This is a close one. The DraftKings odds, Felice Herring. Oh, it's so close. 8,300 right. against 7,900 for Watterson. Are you going to play Watterson on DraftKings? You're more siding with her than I am because I've decided favorite decision. Herring may be a late finish with that size being the, the biggest factor for me. Ugh. I've gone back and forth, and I could see myself going back to Herring. But Herring, I won't play anywhere. I might have Michelle Waters on a few at the price. They should be closer in price, in my opinion. Totally. Um, it is a back and forth fight. I've gone back and forth about it in my head. I can totally switch on my brain for Felice and tear Michelle Waters in apart. I can't really say anything about Felice. I love the way her games come, come together. I think every fight she's continually to got, get better and better and better. I just am trusting Michelle Watterson's camp that they've taken what she does and molded it for her instead of... Which they tend to do. Yeah. Like yeah. the longer they've all been together, the better it seems to work. So the betting favorite, minus 130, Felice Herring against the plus 110, Michelle Watterson. I think the line is going to go minus 115 betting-wise. So if you're betting on Felice Herring, I say hold off until fight day because that's going to be the best odds. If you're on Watterson, now's the time to jump on that price. You think it's going to get closer? I think it's going to get closer. I also, the over, but I guarantee you the prop bet for the over is going to be minus money. See, I think the second weigh-ins happen, um, especially uh, ceremonial weigh-ins, where everyone gets to see uh, Felice filled in, watered up, I think it sways heavy toward her. Oh, really? Yeah. So you think now's the time for Felice if you're going to go for it at yeah. minus 130? I think this is the best, Michelle, or the best it's going to look. Time. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. This is the best Michelle Watterson's going to look. So it is She's prudent. Swing if you haven't subscribed at Labby, you better because that's how time sensitive these. You need to download the show, listen to it, and get on your sports betting, whatever you like to do, and put the juice in. But I think lines are going to move a lot compared to most other cards because these fights in this next four we have are also incredibly close. They're uh, just everyone. I can see an underdog everywhere. Woo! There we go. To the heavyweights. I have to change to Felice. <laughs> We're going to move on from that one. It's too much of a toss-up. We're going to end up... No, I don't think it is. I think it's going to fall heavily, more heavily toward Belize. Like, the more I look back at it... Did the bean just change your mind? No, the wins of Michelle Watterson did. I would agree with that. Much lesser competition than Much Herring's... Much less than Herring's Belize. Herring's been in there with beasts. Going on to beasts, we're coming in at 265 pounds with Derek Lewis, the Black Beast himself, against Alexander Volkov, the Bellator champion himself, making a run in the UFC now. The 30 and 6 fighter Volkov has oh, come in as a, a huge fight, underdog for here as at Latby. We both picked them against Fabrice Verdun, former champion, and uh, guess what? Other people are starting to see what we see. Volkov is a well rounded MMA fighter who's a legitimate giant and proportionate and has a beautiful jab, good footwork on the ground and serviceable. Derek Lewis comes in at 20 and five. 
most of his losses coming in the UFC, but we really know what we're getting with Derek Lewis. We've seen it earlier and on in the fight night, and Derek Lewis is a low percentage puncher. Everybody's like, Naganu, Derek Lewis, slowest punches of all time. That's because Naganu. Derek Lewis stays at that one punch every so often, that clip of four or five punches with 30 second breaks every single one of his fights. Roy Nelson, Mark Hunt, until he got fit, everyone. He has low punch percentage, but what Derek Lewis relies on is that power. That black power. And he gets in there and knocks your head off. Um, remember Roy Nelson's held on by a mullet, by a little mullet tail? He, his head just, whoo, arguably won that fight. But with Derek Lewis, I feel like his back has always been an issue. His cardio's always been an issue. And I feel like he was having hand issues before. If Volkov can stay away from that power shot, I don't see how Volkov doesn't take this fight in a decision. If not, TKO round number three, because I think Volkov can repeat exactly what Mark Hunt did, Mark Hunt did if not better. And Derek Lewis against any heavyweight, doesn't matter who it is, you got to be careful because he has that power even in the third round to finish your night. But I do see decided favor here. I got Volkov. Underdog's alive just because it's Derek Lewis, and he does this. He loses all three rounds until he gets that knockout shot. Who do you have in this fight and why? That is all true, and for a lot of the same reasons, I have Volkov. I have him to just knock him out a bit sooner. I think the pace that Volkov tends to keep is going to wear Derek out. He shouldn't be in there right now. He still hasn't gotten the surgery from said loss however long ago. The last fight was boring as hell. The fight before that, he got that shot that you're talking about. I think that Volkov sets a pace that Derek Lewis hasn't been in the octagon with in quite some time that I, he almost has ring rust. <laughs> he almost has ring rust to me. Volkov is young, he's hungry, and I think the same thing every time I look at him. He's proportionate. It's like, so his cardio works different than a lot of these yeah. other guys at this weight. Um, I think the kind of pace he sets, I agree with you too. Two or three. Late second round, early third, Volkov knockout. But it's not going to be a knockout. It's going to be a technical knockout. And part of it's going to be from exhaustion. I could totally see Derek Lewis just not getting up and being like, ah, fuck that, guys. Body shots I don't and do exhaustion, it. yeah. Yeah, and it's... We've just seen it in Lewis, but he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. Go home to April. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Maybe get the surgery. Right. And then come back. I, I do like the way his body's looking. His cardio is probably going to be a little better. Maybe he didn't get to show it off in the Naganu fight, and he's going to go in a little cocky against Volkov, and I think that's dangerous as well. I would love to say yeah, I hope he gets better, but I have never seen a different... Derek Lewis in there. <laughs> that is true. I've never, it's always been the exact same thing. So at 8,700 for Volkov, he is a decided favorite on DraftKings against 7,500 for Derek Lewis. Betting wise as well, Volkov is a minus 185 favorite. I feel like that's spot on. I don't think the line is going to change that much on a lot of people see what we're seeing in that spot. But I have gone back and forth on this fight, just the same yeah. as every other fight on this fight card tonight. Totally. Uh, 229, the card of back and forth. Uh, Derek Lewis has that one punch power, you're so right, and he could just knock down Timber. Doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. I don't care who it is. It could be a horse. I bet you Derek Lewis knocked out a oh, horse. easy. <laughs> <laughs> easy. So, we gotta move on to the 205ers. Ovince and St. Prue coming in against Dominic Reyes. Dominic Ray is coming in with a 9 and 0 perfect he looks dresser. Just like Polar Reyes. This is oh, I could see that. We were I could totally see The other Reyes or Pedro, but we were mixed in with Pedro. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but we have Tyson Reyes. Pedro. Ty but we were we knew Tyson Pedro. And there's another Pedro we keep not remembering. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Pedro Munoz. No. <laughs> so, um, Dominic Reyes being uh, having a Success in the UFC, beating Cannoneer via TKO, beating Kimball via submission, coming off of the LFA championship. He also being Joaquin Christensen via TKO. Perfect finishes in there against uh, the prospect Ovinson St. Prue at 35 years old, which 
isn't a prospect anymore. People have been calling him a prospect for years and years and years, and same as Derek Lewis, you know what you're getting in there with OSP. Crazy striking. By crazy, I mean hands down, gassed after the first round. He has heavy punches like into you the know third. I what you're getting. That's why. Oh, I feel like you Every can call it. Every fight is, like, fucking different. Every... He's just a weird fighter. Oh, he's well, an odd he's, fighter. He's, he's in the same as Derek Lewis, as in he stays the same. It's a different fighting style, but it's the same as Derek Lewis, where you know what you're getting. You're getting an OSP fight in there, which is hands down, mm -hmm. getting tired after that first round. But he'll Von flu you. He'll use a takedown, get you down, and Von flu you in a heartbeat, even in the third round. He's someone you got to worry about in the third round. John Jones, short notice, went five rounds with he OSP. He's like a Mahetha Santos. Now, yeah. Where you're never, it's like. Yeah, he'll be he'll be hands on his knees and throw a punch and knock you out because he has that type of athletic power. You know he's that football player. OSP has that also one punch ability that Derek Lewis has. Reyes though has looks so good. He is a tall fighter at six four, uses his length well. He's gonna have a three inch reach disadvantage to OSP. You know OSP got them long arms, but Reyes comes in there being an IT guy. Very flashy, throws his kicks well, and this is his first real heavy test. Cannonier isn't a bad guy to look good against. OSP is definitely that next step, though. And people that are saying that this is a one-sided fight, I don't necessarily agree with because of that same Derek Lewis situation we were talking about before. It's You can't overlook OSP, and for that reason, I can't put Reyes everywhere. I'm going to put him on a lot, but it's going to be that 60% just because OSP has that Von Flew and or guillotines. He is starting to fade a bit more at 35 in his career. I'm going to go with Reyes TKO round number two. Usually he gets it done in the first, but I feel like the gas tank plays into it. I think Reyes is going to show us what he's capable of. At 28, he's only going to get better, and he is on a laser beam of a track for a reason. He's been finishing guys decisively, and I think OSP might be another one of those guys, but it's OSP. John Jones couldn't do it in five rounds. I probably have, or I've never bet against Polar or Dominic Reyes, and I'm 100% with him. I, on the other hand, I always bet against OSP, <laughs> and I'm 100% wrong. Truth. <laughs> Truth, 100% like, truth. Every time I pick him to win, he loses. Every time I pick him to lose, he wins. I So I have uh, Reyes KO round two. Woo! I think he figures out OSP. I think OSP is the same thing the whole time, a little slower. Um, he is tricky in there as hell, and he can pull, pull out something different every time. I don't know. He, like, he can pull out those crazy head kicks or a Von Flu choke or, you know, something of that nature where it's like, holy shit, what just happened? Yep. He is one of those guys where something spectacular can happen. I hope it doesn't happen. I'm an OSP hater, and I really like Dominic Raya, so this is also total bias on my opinion. KO round two. So we here at Lappy, usually when we're in those Spe same specific round, same way of finishing. Might put a prop bet on there, depending on what it is. Round number two, Reyes. Reyes on DraftKings being 8,900 against 7,300. How much exposure do you think you're going to have the Reyes in this DraftKings? He's almost 9,000. It's He's got to get a finish to pay that off. I'm nervous because I also think OSP is chinny and I all, he could get submitted just out of getting tired. Um... But he's one of those guys that I am sketchy to bet against at this point. So probably 50%. Right. I'm saying like 60%, but I yeah, I want to go 100%, but you got to give a little respect to OSP. He's been in there with the best of them. Uh, he's had to have learned a couple things by now. So we move on to the co main event. We got a battle that is just waiting because weigh-ins haven't happened. Press conferences haven't happened. We still have hours, minutes, seconds oh before God. the main event gets underway. One of these guys is ready to take that next fight if one of those main guys can't be there. But if everything holds out, we get all 12 of these bouts. Tony Ferguson at 155 pounds coming in 
against Anthony Pettis, this is one of those that that knee is the biggest unknown factor. Under six months ago, Tony Ferguson posted some of the gnarliest scar recoveries that I've seen in a long time. Tony Ferguson has more positive belief in him than most people do and thinks differently than most people do. And I think that benefits him on the healing scale. But at the same time, he's had liquid in his lungs. He's had injuries that other people don't have because of his unique training habits. And did you see him with the massage gun on the side of his leg? Of his scar? Yeah. And I'm just like, ah, oh, please don't rip it right now. <laughs> Please don't rip it. With that hard muscle massager. With that Faraza hobby gun. <laughs> it's a drill that that's they just attach a clip to. But that's a drill for like a NASCAR gun. He's like, oh no, it's industrial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> legitly. Um, so with that, he's Tony Ferguson has a handful here. Anthony Pettis, former champion, Wheaties box. His little brother is going to be better than him. But before that... Anthony Pettis had to pave the way, and it is a star-studded showtime of events with kicks, spinning kicks, cartwheel kicks, submission finishes. Anthony Pettis is just one of those guys that unfortunately breaks under heavy-duty pressure, and we know what Tony Ferguson does. Ask Dos Santos, ask anyone else. Tony Ferguson moves forward. Hashtag and my champion. <laughs> Hashtag me too. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on in that main event. It shouldn't be for the belt. <laughs> the real belt we still have with Tony Ferguson. He's never been officially stripped via his own words. Snap Jitsu's going to get underway. I do think, though, Tony Ferguson has to be worried about leg kicks here because of that injury. Anthony Pettis knows what we know. He throws kicks to the legs as well. Throws a good vi variety of kicks to the body. And I think Tony can be hurt like other people. Cerrone, other people have where... One of those kicks, all of a sudden, you fold over because Anthony Pettis has that type of power. And Anthony Pettis has submitted the best of them. Benson Henderson, which is not easy to do. Armbar cities, triangles all day. But I do think the further this fight goes down, the less Anthony Pettis has to win. The decided favorite at minus 270 favorite, Tony Ferguson. I think a lot of people see what we're probably seeing here. And it's that grinding non-stop movement i think tony ferguson can actually blow his acl out and still win a decision and be out for another year because i just do not like five months ago that dude had some massive ass surgery on his leg but i am gonna pick tony ferguson to get a finish round number three darts choke off a bad shot because anthony pettis isn't gonna be able to do that spin kick when you got el cucuy all on top of you same as he did the dos años and everybody else I feel like Tony Ferguson is almost like the Anthony Pettis with a better chin. <laughs> He's a little wackier of a fighter, but he just has a little bit better of a ground game. And, I mean, Anthony Pettis' last win was against an emotionally scarred Michael Chiesa. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't make weight? Almost he died. He, Moved almost, up. he emotionally battle scarred. <laughs> he, like, come on, the guy could have been champion if that, you know... Um, anyway, uh, Jim Miller decision. Yeah. And then Charles <laughs> Oliveira has got his game together of recent, but back then he was sketched to the USA. In the same boat as Anthony Pettis, emotionally unstable at times. Anthony Pettis is better at 155, but there's a reason he went down to 145. Tony Ferguson is the best of 155, and I don't think Anthony Pettis is there anymore. I do think Tony Ferguson will be mildly tentative. I could see leg kicks like you're saying, but one of Tony Ferguson's charming things is that he can get hurt and keep coming, hurt and mm -hmm. keep coming, hurt and keep coming. It's so fun to watch him in the octagon because a few times in every fight he's in, you're like, oh, shit. This guy's over. This guy's going to get finished. Um, he just keeps coming back. Anthony Pettis doesn't. He's just not as durable. I agree with you. He does have quit in there. It could be questionable how his brother, if his brother wins the first Thank fight. you, because I was just waiting to jump in on that. 
If Baby Badass loses to Formiga, which I've been back and forth on, Me I think, as well. I, I, I think Formiga can be, definitely be put on some parlays and he can make you some good money back. But if Pettis, Baby Pettis loses at all, extra stream, steam that line. You can put full money against Anthony Pettis, but most people are already at minus. In my opinion, even if he wins, I just think it's an adrenaline dump. There's nothing you can do to control that. There's nothing you can do to train or control with a win or a loss and that emotion in a fight. And I think this is dangerous. Either way you cut it, I think it's an adre adre adrenaline dump. I think Tony Ferguson is, he has the taste of blood in his mouth. Like he wants a fight so bad. It has been so long coming with the two Khabib fights that fell out. And now like, it's like, finally, Tony Ferguson, the same froth like we have for this fight. Imagine this crazy fucking El Kukui animal that's running up and down mountains and putting water in his lungs. Like, this guy's crazy. Yeah. And he's a crazy trainer because he just tastes this win. And I could even move it up to round two, but right now, I see a crazy submission even off his back. Tony Ferguson, round three. He figures Anthony Pettis out. It's a different Tony every time in there. Wow. Wow. I'm excited about it. Here, Lab Bay, going, going two for two. two. Going two for two. Submission round number three. Better put some money on that prop bet as well. How comfortable are you going to be with uh, my correction here? Minus 360 favorite, Tony Ferguson, 9,300 on DraftKings against 6,900 against Anthony Pettis. Well, he hashtag is my champion. So I will probably have him on as many as I can afford. I agree. You're going to end up having to really get some weaker guys in there. Maybe the Green Meter. Maybe the Formigas. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't That's a dirty ass call. Don't get mad at me if it doesn't come through because that's a fucking big underdog. Um, I just... I We love not only Tony Ferguson. We love Eddie Bravo's jiu-jitsu. Yep. I just don't think you catch Tony in a submission. submission. That's going to be what's played on... <laughs> that, that's going to be what's played back. So... That's going to be a showcase fight. I can't wait. It's still going to be a fun one. If that was the main event, I'd be pleased. I'd be like, damn, that was a good fight night. But then we have the fight of all fights. We have been talking about it for long. We already know who's siding with who. So I'm going to say, Lesbo, change my mind. Change my mind. No way. Why? No way. <laughs> you no think way. Conor McGregor's going to win? Because I have Khabib. The number one, Norman Gomez of time, coming in, being the favorite, minus 165 against Conor McGregor, coming off of a two-year hiatus. The champ champ is back, whiskey logo and all. This is why we're here, five rounds of pure madness. I don't know if we get to five rounds even, because I think the crowds, Brendan Schaub was right, I think there could be some stabbing, there could be some heavy-duty shit going on in this fight, because you got... Two very volatile communities coming in against each other here. It's the wrestling versus the striker. It's the magic man versus the eagle. I think the wrestling and risk control. I think the forward pressure, the constant pressure. We've seen Eddie Alvarez. We've seen uh, Chad Mendes on short notice. We've seen other fighters be able to take uh, Conor McGregor down. Eventually, Conor can get up, but not against Habib. Not with that type of top control. So I do think... As this fight goes on, it's just more and more of a beating, more and more of a TKO ground and pound. I can actually see this eventually being a fifth round, maybe in the fourth round, TKO where this is the same as Mayweather, where his hands pinned Michael Johnson. Even though Michael Johnson was a Kimura submission, essentially in that fight, he held on to that wrist. Habib did once he got him to the cage and got him down and just used his free hand. Two pound him in a submission. I'm going with Dan Cormier. I got Khabib. Who do you have for this fight and why? The only champions at AKA beat the number 11th ranked guy to get their belts. <laughs> <laughs> none of A real estate agent? Yeah, none of them have their belts by beating the Dana champion. Dan Cormier? Yeah. Who did he beat to get his belt? Stephen Miocic. Oh, that belt. Yeah, that's yeah. legit. That's a legit ass that's belt. That's a real ass that's belt. A real I was thinking of a 205 belt. Oh, Sorry. okay. One a legit, illegitimate belt, for One sure. One illegitimate belt. He's a champ-cha. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, 
Khabib. He beats the real estate agent to get the belt. <laughs> Good line. Um, I like that as well. We all know what we get from Khabib. And it's the best at that. And everybody says he is the best in the world at that. They never seen anyone better than him. Like until now we have Zabit from the same region. We never seen anyone better than him. Um do you think Khabib's emotional? No. Did I think that press conference got to him and has he had emotions about it? Yes. But do I think that it's going to change his game plan? No. Do you think that um, he'll, he'll get emotional again before weigh-ins? Do you think he'll have a hard time? Weigh-ins is a big one. Weigh-ins is a big one. And we know Connor likes to talk shit in the back. The more Mac life we see, the more bad blood, the more uh, episodes of Embedded we get out there. Conor McGregor looks to make controversial situations because very Ali-like, Ali didn't just do it at weigh-ins. Ali did it all that he would show up to your house at night and scream at your house. That's the type of game plan that Conor McGregor puts into effort and game plan he puts effort into his opponents. And it does affect a lot of people. Even with that, I think the wrestler here, the bean always tends to side with the wrestler. And when you see the 10 or the, the 10 takedown attempts, five that he gets every single round, I don't think Connor is going to have the space to be able to put that shot a lot like Tony Ferguson, where Tony Ferguson's going to stay in tight to stay away from those Pettis kicks. I think Habib does the same thing. You can't punch me with that left hand if my chin is underneath your head. Or if my head is underneath your chin. Got that backwards. He, Khabib doesn't use, tend to get the first takedown he goes for. He just pushes people back, pushes people back, pushes people back. And the reason that tends to get a lot of people is because people can't fight off their back foot. One of the things that Conor McGregor does the best is fight off his back foot. Khabib also comes in forward, head first, chin up, like everything dangerous about what Conor McGregor likes to catch. Here's a little tip. All right. This is my inside, Just a tip. This is my inside fucking gambling shit. I haven't seen this anywhere else. All right. But I'm wondering after this show how many people are fucking saying it. I've noticed now two totally separate black eye scars on Khabib since I've been watching these pressers and everything go down on camera. Do you think Khabib Abdelaziz did that after he said what he said to him? <laughs> I think somebody's doing heavier sparring than they've ever done before because I've never noticed Khabib with black eyes in two different spots. So if you've done heavier sparring than you've ever done before, uh, Guess what the one thing Conor McGregor doesn't have to train? Heavy sparring. Nope. Pretty much at all. It, the chances, you know, we've talked about how in, I don't know if we ever have on the podcast, but usually the smaller the animal, the faster they can see. So if, like, you're a little hummingbird, like a human moves to them, like, uh, I feel like if you train for a guy like Floyd, Floyd sees Conor yep. like a hummingbird would see a human. But training for Floyd, you get a little bit of that. So Connor can't see the same way as Floyd, but he can see a lot better than Khabib, who didn't have good hands anyway. So now Khabib's been training for heavy sparring, getting some rattle in his brain that he's never really done before. It lets me know Khabib's nervous, and this is about more than just, like, this isn't just for the belt. This is something bigger than that. This is something past these two guys. Like the same way you're saying, like it's the energy is going to be like frothy the in the arena. arena. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be thick. It's yep. like swamp air. It's going to be like Ghostbusters too. Yeah. The ooze. I think Khabib's done harder sparring than he ever has, and it's going to give him a false sense of security to how hard Connor's going to hit him compared to that sparring. So I think that's a little inside. Mm. I still. Everything could change at weigh-ins. We might have to do a pre, like a little a live, live on, show. Live Periscope or Twitter. If something crazy goes down, I just feel like this is a is historical be... event, regardless. In Vegas, we have Habib on DraftKings Did for you... 8400 Another shout out. Oh. Did you see Alpaca's little breakdown? Yes, and I was going to eventually get to that. 
And I think that, of course, we've all been sending the people stores, good if stuff. If you haven't followed them on YouTube, they're really amazing. We give them shout outs all the time. But the body language of Conor McGregor at weigh ins, that, that, that was everything to me. Now. That was going to be my tidbit. As I was saying, though, I don't mean to cut you off too much, but no. this is going to roll into exactly what we're saying. 8,400 on DraftKings for Habib against 7,800 against Conor. If you haven't seen Alpaca Thesaurus, you better watch it because it talks about the body language of the last press conference. And I would agree, I do see those changes. The Alpaca put every single of the weigh-ins, every single one of the weigh-ins of Conor's last 12 fights, and it shows this progression in the one time he lost, how different he acted in that first Diaz fight. And it looks like twinges of that may be happening against Habib because of where Connor's at, a lot of people, boxers say it's hard to wake up and fight when you're sleeping on silk sheets. Every champion has said it. Once you get money, it's hard to get that dog. I know, but then you also have to see the champions like Floyd or Manny or uh, and Joshua or, I mean, every champion you name has more money than Connor McGregor. And they, like, a lot of them are still winning fights. And Connor has specifically talked about this as well, saying, like, it's not about the money and never has been. It's about the legacy as well, um, and it's also about making money, but it's not just about that, which helps me squash it that a little bit. But the other big concern, my little tip that I feel like I have just that I caught, tip. Just, just, just the tip. It is when Connor went on that interview earlier this week, he specifically called that Anderson Silva, which means. He's not thinking about this fight and or cares about this because Conor McGregor doesn't matter if he's the champ. He's a money fight. He can fight anybody and he's going to be a, the main event of that pay-per-view regardless of what belts might be there. And the fact that he's already calling out somebody that much higher regardless if I think it's fictional or not. To me, it sees that, oh, he thinks he's going to sleep him in the first round like he did Aldo. And all of a sudden when... Those punches, uh, might, some might get through or not. As soon as those takedowns add up, all of a sudden we're going to start to see that quit. Watch that Diaz first submission, and you see Conor McGregor give up his back because he was getting pounded out by Diaz in a grind of a fight. I didn't even think that was a real statement at all when he said it. I think he was it was his power move against GSP to say, I'm the A-side of this that. fight. I like, like that. I'm the A-side. I can fight Anderson Silva and it's the same thing for my legacy. I don't need the fight. You're the one that needs the retirement fight. You're the one that needs... And the other thing I like about Connor, which I'm starting to realize, yes, things are personal, whatever. I also think every single person he takes a fight with, he loves making them money too. He loves it. There's something like when he said, oh, you're gonna call your wife and say life's different, baby. Put on the red panties. Conor McGregor made us rich. I think he really, when I hear about him, and not that he's doing charity for these other guys, but just because of some of his favorite fighters aren't great talkers. And now some of them know their worth because of him. And that part, even for Khabib, he was a fan of Khabib the same way he's like, you were a fanboy. He was a fanboy of Khabib too. They yep. were fanboys of each other. I mean, and so I think something, the amount of money, and even when he told Eddie Alvarez, him saying aloud, I can't believe you took this fight on your old contract. He like told him right there in yep. the middle of a press conference, like told a tip to the other fighters. Like if you're fighting for a big fight or end up in a place like this, that's your leverage point. Like, do something with it. Right. So, for Khabib, the amount of money he could potentially make from this fight, being in the position that he's in right now, and take back to his country, and maybe what he could do later on, is such a fucking huge deal. Maybe way bigger than Connor could understand, and even being from Ireland and the army he has behind him. So, like, just from the amount of, like, the wealth in the country. Like, having that kind of hero. So, I just think the amount of pressure is on Khabib, because no matter what, Connor's a money fight. He's always going to break $1.2 million yep. from this point forward in fights. Like, do you agree with Bren Brennan Shaw that he's going to break over $2 million? Mm, I don't know. That's pretty steep. I don't... Because the European deals are so different on that BT Sports and that, that they don't do pay-per-views, it's specifically U.S. And I don't know how... Um, the regular public 
because I do feel like I've had to explain this fight where other, the Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, I had my co-workers or bosses that are 60 year old ladies telling me about that where they didn't know this one was coming up because if you don't know hardcore mma habib is he's an underground king he's he's one of those guys that as ground 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 with the charity with everything real quick i do gotta say shout out to conor mcgregor helping out that young boy with cerebral palsy i got some ties to cp and that was dope he wasn't looking to make anybody he didn't post it like oh i gave 10 grand to this family he just had somebody ask him to help for a feeding tube to be put in and he was like yeah 10 grand there you go kids there you go that was he a really cool gesture he didn't of... want no he was like no that's it, it, it's just a lot of things story. that he's done like even i heard him talk about artem lobov this week and it touched my heart that was dope too um, i did like that i believe he is partially fighting for his friend like, I really believe that part of Connor being there every day and finding, like, a oh, perfect reason to train. Um, I do think we see Connor versus GSP uh, eventually. I think this is how he starts taunting that fire now. Um, I don't think he cares about an Anderson Silva fight, but if he went up and fought Anderson Silva and lost, like, he wouldn't. He, we, we've also seen Connor lose graciously. Yes. We've seen that of him before. Yep. So people to think that like all well, the Connor McGregor ride or die is you're gonna go somewhere. I got my grandfather's hat on again. I got my grandfather's hat on. Like, you know, he was wearing his yep. like I like it. I'm still a Connor McGregor fan. I still have yet to see if Khabib's the real deal. We're gonna find out. I mean I know he's a real deal. He's obviously an amazing UFC fighter. But is he the champion? And we're going to find out. And then everything that comes in line with that. But he that. is doing something that Connor never did. Defend a belt. Woo! Woo! So then we have, with the time frame, with the other lightweight fight on this card, it sets up for Ferg three months from now fighting whoever well, wins the belt. I actually ask you a couple questions. Just in case. On your DraftKings, though, are you going to put Connor anywhere at 7,800? I feel like Conor McGregor as an underdog, I like what Brendan Schaub was saying too, that it might be an ugly first round that Conor survives because Khabib's not a finisher. Yep. Um, but it doesn't mean Conor's over from there. Like, it could be a lot like the Chad Mendez fight, uh, which I like that too. Um, so I will have him. That's a really cheap price, and it's not the first time Conor McGregor's been an underdog. Minus... 165 favorite Habib Nurmagomedov against a plus 140 for Connor. So that's also underdog money on Connor McGregor. This is one of those things where I've held on off of talking about uh, the betting line because I think this is going to get into that minus 115 money. It's going to get closer. People are going to come in for Connor. And because I think Habib is going to end up finishing this in the fourth or fifth round. I'm going to end up putting a couple prop bets on either one because they'll be over 1,000. And I see, see a grinding the TKO. The longer it goes on, that's where Khabib stops getting the takedowns. Remember him in the fourth and fifth with Al? He could not get a takedown to save his life anymore. He was just like coming forward, coming forward. Coming well, I'm forward. expecting Connor to be gassed as well by that point. Oh, I believe it. Connor so. doesn't have the greatest gas tank, but it was Al wasn't even trained for a five round fight. Some people might say Connor has ring rust. So <laughs> now the questions you were to about me, to the ask ring me rust with... is more existent of people being anxious by the crowd in the octagon and the nerves being on TV. Connor does not possess nerves. He's kind of like <laughs> GSP in that way, where I'm terrified, breathing. Or, no, but like uh, he rises to the occasion, and he's just being the main event is old hat for him. Totally, totally, totally. I could totally see that. Where could be. Do you think he's going to be comfortable with the amount of energy that's going to be in that room? I do think the lights might be a little extra hot in there, but I still see so, a so man who's been question. wrestling bears since Are you he was gonna a child. Khabib, how much is Khabib? Nine. 8,400? Are you going to put him everywhere? I'm going to end up putting Khabib probably on like 80 to 90% of my DraftKings cards, but I could also see mcgregor because if mcgregor gets a finish it's in that first or second and that's over 100 points as well first underdog money i think it could play him maybe even both because if mcgregor gets in a grinding fight he can put points on there as well so i could see a stack you know how i like to stack five round fights and 
this has a the plausibility of being able to go in those what high percentage striking and takedown fight for both guys. So yeah, 80% and then 10% Connor, but not 100 either way. Who do you have? How how, how much do you think you're going to play Connor? Mm, but I, I mean, I, I'll be able to afford him on whatever. I'll have him on a lot of cards. I'll have him dependent. I want to watch the weigh-ins. Those are really... Those will be my percentage. I'll play only Connor. I won't have Khabib on anything. Maybe okay. Maybe like one okay. or two cards. Okay. Um, I'll play a heavy Connor, and then depending on how I like him at weigh-ins, I'll go down from there. Here's the question. If somebody misses weight or doesn't make the fight, who do you think it is? I've heard Habib's already been under his weight standards that he usually is by 10 pounds all week long like he is so ready for this so no and it's only out of the co-main and main event who misses weight yeah i want to say it's likely Tony ferguson he's never missed weight but he's the biggest guy he's coming off of that knee injury he's a professional but i think connor it's either tony or connor i don't see Habib the two guys who never missed Pettis. The two guys who have made 100% of it. Well, except the last one where Tony tore his knee off. Um, but right. other than that, well, that's why I'm saying it's because of that knee. Maybe. But that's a weird random. I, that ain't even a I think a Tony missed one time before, too. I don't think so. Um, I think he hit from an injury or something nope. before. I don't think so. No, that was the only time. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Tony's ever missed weight. Because he didn't miss weight. No, I don't mean weight. I just mean from an injury. Oh, it doesn't come in? Well, that's where I'm saying Tony might be that because but, of that knee as well. I think his knee I'm okay with. I, I'm not worried about Tony making weight. Connor makes 100% of his fights and fights whoever. Everyone's like, Khabib does too. In one fight, he did that. One fight is last fight, which makes it even less likely that they'll do it like two times <laughs> in a row. Um, but if somebody falls out of the main event, who would you rather see move into their spot, Pettis or Ferguson? Of course, Ferguson. That's not even like... So Ferguson versus Khabib, who do you think has that fight? Khabib's been training for a five-rounder, and Ferguson does, I believe, have that five-round at any time because he's one of those freaks, but that knee... He has that Diaz cardio. Yeah, that knee is always... I would probably... Khabib's never going to kick his knee, ever. A true, good point. Khabib never throw a kick. Good point. <laughs> Connor would kick it. And I, we didn't even talk about Connor really kicks against Khabib, which can happen. Yeah, but Connor usually uses his kicks as a setup more than an right. actual Right, but he stomps on that kick. knee, but he might not want to with those two groups. So Tony Ferguson, do you think he beats Khabib? I think Tony will beat Khabib. Yes, I'm on that kukui trade. Do you think he beats Connor? Of course, that would, yes. If I think Khabib beats Connor and Tony beats, yes, MMA math dictates Khabib, uh, Tony Ferguson, 2 O's. 265 champ. <laughs> and do you think Anthony Pettis beats either guy? Nope. I don't either. So I think it kind of... Tony Ferguson's my champion, and I think he gets the second. I would rather watch him fight Conor McGregor or Khabib next. So... Move in. And I think he beats both guys as well. We should go over who's going to be our wager gauger and who's that underdog that I don't know if I want to call it... I think we've been stepping off of that. But do we have a decisive underdog? Evinger seemed to have stuck out for the both of us. I love Tanya Evinger. And the wager gauger potentially, I'm going to say Formiga. But I, because we're both split on him, thinking that he has the best shot of getting the women in there. Or is I like it... Formiga as the wager gauger. Who was the first bad of the night? I already turned mine off. LaFlair Martin. Stay away all day. Oh, but I thought Martin might be a good wager gauger. You were saying that, and at 7,400 against Maynard 7-2, or Anthony Pettis 6-9, Formiga's at 7,600. Oh, uh, Formiga's a good wager gauger to me. I, I like that, too. I like, um, I like, I think a couple of wager gaugers. I like Martin as a wager gauger. Um, but I think the Leslie Smith underdog pick is Tanya Evinger. I think she's actually has potential to win the fight. 
Did, that's why we're picking her. That, I'm picking her to win the her. fight. Well, I'm sometimes just saying. we usually send her, you know, we used to say who would just grind out, like would make it to the end that no one thought. That's how it originally started. Like, <laughs> better than anyone thinks. Anyone yeah. Thought. Well, definitely going to side with Avenger herself. You know we're holding it down here at Lab B. Remember to like and subscribe wherever you I can. I got my... Lucky Shamrock over there. My lucky shirt on. Is that where we're going with Avenger? Because if that's an Irish girl, if I ever seen a Molly she Magpie. She looks like she needs a Guinness and a Chase and a Shamrock. The name should be Patty with two Ds. <laughs> I don't know if that's the masculine way to say it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so excited, but I feel like we're going to see you again. I feel like some Ooh. shit is going to hit the fan. And we're I hope not. I hope not. Injury bug at Twitter, whatever. Stay the hell away Way from these cards. Yep. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Tiramisu? I hope, I hope this, no tiramisu. This is the first time I hope we don't see you again. I hope we don't see you till Sunday. So thank you for liking and subscribing. Yes, more than me. Thanks for listening to Lat B. For all things Lesbo and the Bean, head over to lesboandthebean.com or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.